Hello, Soundies. Welcome to our Sound for Video session. It's good to have you all here today. Hope you're all doing well. It's the 16th of October, 2022. Um, it's getting a little chillier here. Uh, <laughs> we have to wear our light jackets now. Um, we have uh, some exciting things to talk about today, but before I talk about that, I realized this morning when I was setting up the live stream for today, I, after, after last week's session, I... Um, I, I just listened back kind of as a quality assurance check just to see how things streamed out actually on the stream. And I realized, I thought, wow, the sound isn't that great. Like it's something's, something's a little off about the sound. And when I was setting up today, uh, I realized what had happened was that on my, on the Shelfer channel, the, the, um, preamplifier equalizer compressor that we send the audio through for my mic here, uh, I had bumped one of the. <laughs> one of the knobs for the equalizer, the mid-range was turned way up. So we had a little bit of a telephone voice uh, going on. So I think we've got that corrected and it should be sounding better this week than it was last week. You say why have you bumped it? Uh, I bumped it because I uh, I vacuum the room here once a week and I I put the furniture brush on and, and you know, keep all the dust off of the equipment as well. And so I think when I was doing that is when I bumped it. So it would have sounded something a little bit more like this. If you can hear me talk, are you hearing that? That's that's what was happening. So we um, turn that back down and this is what it should sound like, more like this. So <laughs> let's go ahead and jump to over to our agenda and we'll take a look at what we've got going for today. By popular demand, last week and specifically a request from Rob Christensen, we are going to look at mixing music behind dialogue. In other words, if you have music and dialogue at the same time, putting the music kind of behind it so that you can hear the dialogue, but not turning the music down so much that you almost can't tell it's there. That's a kind of ongoing challenge, I think, that most of us face at one time or another. And we'll demo that in a couple of uh, scenarios. I'll, I'll show the principle. Again, the principles apply for pretty much any mixer that you're using. So if you're doing this live or if you're doing post-production, uh, you can do it in almost any digital audio workstation. So I want to demonstrate how to do it in two cases. Here we're going to use a Black Design, sorry, Black Magic Design ATEM Mini, uh, which has the software mixer, which includes the tools that we need, including a fader and an equalizer. And then we'll also show how to do this in post in Audition. And in Audition, we can also use another tool called Sidechain Compression. So we'll show you how that works as well. So you know you have three three options here. And we'll, we'll we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then we'll go over to our question and answer. We actually just had one video um, question submitted. So we'll talk to that uh, after we do our demo here. So let's go ahead and switch over to the Mac first of all. And right now you're hearing me. And what I'll do here is I'm going to... I've got the music that will be coming in in just a moment here on this channel called Mac. So it's on the computer here. And um, I've got an equalizer as well. I'm going to go ahead and reset this. Okay, so first let me just play the music so that you can hear what what it would sound like if we're kind of competing with one another. So I'll play the outro music. This is you've heard this before. Okay, so now we have music playing plus me talking at the same time, and uh, they're kind of competing with each other. And an obvious thing to do is to just grab the fader and pull that music back. Problem is, is at some point you start to lose the music. You can't hear the music nearly as much or it's just sort of this very faint thing in the background so another thing you can do is maybe not pull the fader down quite so much we'll boost it back up some here and instead i'm going to go into my equalizer so on the atem mini that's right here i'm going to grab this here now the thing is is the intelligibility for voice is mostly in this kind of between 500 and 2 kilohertz range. And if I pull the levels on the music down in that range, you can hear it makes a pretty substantial difference. So I can still, I can boost some overall levels of the music up a fair bit. And yet you can hear me, but you can also hear the music a little bit better than you could before. And let me just play the music without and with the equalizer so you can hear. Here's with. And here's without. Okay, so when we pull that mid-range down in the music with an equalizer, 
they're not competing nearly as much. And you can tune this, you know, wherever you want it to be. So we're going through our bridge here on the music. Boom. Okay, so there's an example of one thing you can do. So instead of just taking the fader and pulling it way back, which is, uh, now you can't, you can, you know, it's still there, but you can't hear it as prominently. And what we can do, this is kind of one of the basic principles of mixing actually. Making space for, you can think of it in terms of my voice being an instrument versus all the other instruments in the music. We're just making space for my voice. And uh, that's kind of the basic idea. So that's one way you can do it live. If you are working on a mixer or you have a software mixer like this, one thing you can do to make that work. So let's go ahead and stop the music here. Okay, there we go. We'll get that reset. Danny just reminded me to get that reset so that when, we'd, <laughs> when we're done with the session here, we can pull that back out. Now, a couple of things on the equalizer that'll be important. Now, when you first turn the equalizer on, and this is true of most equalizers, they're usually going to have a Q factor, or sometimes it's called width, of about two. But we generally want to widen that up some. And so what I did is I actually set this to 0 0.5, and that makes it a much wider cut. And again, makes a lot more space for my voice. Um, you can tune that, you know, to whatever makes sense for your particular case, but usually you're going to want to go pretty, pretty wide. And this is kind of a, to be honest, this is a bit of a brute force method. <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll talk about some more subtle methods you can use in just a moment here in post. Okay, so that's the example there. Let's go over to Adobe Audition and take a look here. So here I have a voiceover track. And in fact, this is the voiceover that we did last week where we demonstrated how to clean this up in Isotope RX. And this is the final one that I delivered to Alan. And you'll note here, this is actually pretty loud. Um, we'll, and we'll come back to that. But here's the music that I want to mix. And what you'll notice about that is that it's extraordinarily loud. <laughs> it is pegged right up against zero dB, just barely preventing itself from clipping and distorting. Um, and in fact, if we come over here to our amplitude statistics in Audition, and if you don't see that in your copy, come up to the window and choose amplitude statistics so that you have a check mark next to it. Let me go ahead and just scan this file here. And this is sitting at minus six, or sorry, minus 9.66 LUFS. That's extraordinarily loud. In fact, once we mix these together, we're gonna have to pull that way back because that's way too loud. And then let's go and take a look at my voiceover. My voiceover is probably too loud too for the overall mix. We're probably gonna need to pull this down. This is sitting at about minus 15.58, minus 16 roughly. Um, we may want to pull that down a bit as well because when they're playing together, remember that's additive. And so um, as I'm talking and the music is playing at the same time, the overall mix level will be louder. So let's talk about how we would go uh, about mixing these together. And so first I'm going to come up to the multi-track button right here. We want to create a new multi-track session. And I'm going to call this Dialogue um, Music Mix. And that's fine. We're going to go ahead and we're not going to choose a template. I want my sample rate at 48 kilohertz. That's what all the audio is at. Um, we're going to do 32-bit float is the bit depth, and that's just for the processing. And then we're going to do a stereo mix and click OK. And that gets us to this UI here. So now I have multiple tracks where I can lay things out. So let's go back to our files up here. And I'm going to first get my voiceover and put that on the very first track. And in fact, I can rename the track here. Whoops, we'll call this Curtis Dialog DX for Dialog. We will go get that music and we'll put that right here and we'll make this our music track here. That's our music track. Now I have all these extra tracks here. I really don't need them. So I'm gonna come up to multi-track, go to the tracks submenu, and I'm gonna delete empty tracks. So that takes us down to three now. I have my dialog, the music and the overall mix. This is the output. This is the what everybody is hearing down here. Okay, so first we have this problem where I have my dialogue and the music are just way too loud. So I need to take care of those. So what I can do is just double click here um, and 
let's bump both of them down to minus 24. And the way I can quickly do that is I've got this match loudness panel down here. If you don't have that, you can go to window, match loudness. That'll show up here. And you can kind of resize some of these windows here. I'm going to grab both the voiceover and the music, drop them both down here in this window. And I'm going to set them to minus 24 LUFS. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see the waveforms change. That's looking a lot more reasonable now. And here's the music now. <laughs> uh, looks a lot different. So this is, of course, what the music sounds like. Okay. And in fact, we're just going to use this bit here, I think. Yeah, we'll cut right. Whoops. Cut right there. Cut that out. That's fine. Okay. Now we'll go back to our multi-track. There we are. Okay. We're getting a little warning here because I cut that after we put it into the multi-track session, but that's that's okay. We can dismiss this warning. It's okay. We, we meant to do that. One thing I will typically do just when I'm when I'm mixing multi-track in audition, one thing that's pretty useful to do is actually to do a command A to select all of the tracks and then come up here to clip and lock in time. So if I've got it laid out so that they're in sync, for example, with video, you definitely want to lock things in time so that you don't accidentally come in and, you know, just with your mouse bump something out of out of place. Um, so that lock in time right here will keep it in, in sync. That's a kind of a useful tip for avoiding mistakes in an audition. So let's go ahead and play this and see where we're sitting right now. Might be a little on the loud side. If you'd like to ask a sound-related question for a future episode, send a written, audio, or video question to ssp at soundspeeds.us. That's Okay, definitely competing right now. So we're definitely going to need to do some things here. Now we could do the exact same things that we did before. So um, I have right here, I'm just opening these tracks a little bit. In fact, let's go back to how I had that. And I'm going to just use the roller on my on my mouse here to increase the size of all of these tracks. And I don't really need to see the mix track right now. I just mainly need to see these two. Okay. So um, I can go ahead and here's the essentially the fader, or I can come over to my mixer. I just do this. Um, I have faders here, so I can just take the music and I can pull it down some. So let's go ahead and play it back and do a little bit of that. Sound speeds with an S at the end, dot US. Want to record this outro? Well, you can't. I'm recording this outro. But if you'd like to record the outro for a future episode, see the details in the description below. Find sound speeds on social media and on... So I had to go down to about minus 18 on the music to really kind of make sure that the dialogue was coming through okay. That's a lot. Um, and we, we may want to do that or we might not. <laughs> um, but let me just uh, also come back and show you another... Um, oh, let's come back to the, the multi-track here. I want to actually... There is another feature in Audition that some people use, and that is the Essential Sound Panel. And what you can do here is you can identify each of your tracks. So here I have dialogue, so that's my voiceover. I'm going to click that's dialogue. And then over here I have music, so I can click music. And I can tell this to duck. Uh, in other words, to kind of move behind the, mu the, the dialogue. And I have all these settings to make that happen. And you'll notice when I do that, it actually, you can see right here, it is a, it's drawing in a line here that shows that it's going to pull that music down. And in fact, if we... Just uh, go farther out. And it's, you can see once I stop talking, that level comes back up. Let's go ahead and see how that sounds, just out of curiosity. If you'd like to ask a sound-related question for a future episode, send a written... Okay, so kind of the same thing I was doing before, but it's basically automating. So it'll play the music at full volume at first. Then when I start talking, it will pull it down. Now... We have a variety of settings over here that we can work with to change, you know, how it's doing that. My dialogue is coming pretty quickly, so I don't know that it makes a lot of sense to kind of boost the levels back up between phrases because they're just taking a pause to take a breath and things like that. So not necessarily something you'd want to do, but just so that you're... Um, 
so you can see what some of these these settings do. Let's say, for example, I want to duck. This is it's, it's dropping at 18 dB. Maybe we don't want to drop quite so much. Maybe we'd say, let's try and see what it sounds like. We we tried this before. Maybe minus 14. Let's tell it to be more sensitive. Watch what happens here if we if we're more sensitive and we reduce the fade duration. Ah, oh, what look at look at those little lines there. See what it's doing. It's actually boosting those levels back up. Let's see what that sounds like, just out of curiosity. If you'd like to ask a sound-related question for a future episode, send a written, audio, or video question to ssp at soundspeeds.us. That's soundspeeds with an S at the end, dot US. Want to record this outro? Well, you can't. Nope. That is definitely not what we want. So that's when it, that's an example of it getting a little too fiddly and definitely not something we want. And you'll notice those will all disappear as soon as I increase this fade duration. And this is a number in milliseconds. So right now we're at uh, 500 milliseconds. That means that it's going to fade for at least um, half a second, basically, before it checks to see if there's another pause in the dialogue. And once we do that, it, you can see it drops all those others. So this is pretty, pretty good. Um, it's not perfect, uh, but it does get you pretty close and it's easy to use. The problem is, is that it's doing the same thing we were doing before and just basically pulling the fader down. It's not doing the EQ uh, approach that we were showing earlier. So it's not always the very best. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for now. And we're going to go ahead and close the essential sound panel but just so that you're aware that is there and it is a fairly easy thing to work with if you just need something quick and dirty and a lot of times i think you'll see video editors will do stuff like that so not a bad way we can do a little bit better as well too though okay so let's um let's go ahead and pull the fader down well actually the one thing that the Essential Sound Panel did that we are not doing here is that it automated the levels. So in other words, it let the music play at full volume until I started talking, and then it pulled it down. And we can actually do a similar thing using what's called automation within Adobe Audition. So what I can do here is I'm going to come to, let's see here. We can actually do any of these, but I want to come to this little drop down here so this is the automation right here and i want to change this to let's choose latch okay and what this will do is this will let us change our fader level while we're playing the music back and it will record those fader changes and that way those are kind of baked in so it'll automatically do what we want it to do so i'm going to switch over to my mixer and start the playback and adjust the fader here we go. If you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode, send a written, audio, or video question to ssp at soundspeeds.us. That's soundspeeds with an s at the end.us. Want to record this outro? Well, you can't. I'm recording this outro. But if you'd like to record the outro for a future episode, see the details in the description below. Find Sound Speeds on social media and online at www.soundspeeds.us. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more sound-related content. And what I mean is, if you really want to learn something, you should subscribe. I learn new things from Alan all the time. One time, I was listening to this episode and my mind was blown. Okay, now, if we come back here, and in fact, we're going to roll this down right here and scroll up a little bit. And you can see our fader movements right there. It recorded our fader movements. So at the start, we started talking and then I pulled the fader down. And you can actually edit these as well. In fact, if we zoom in here, you can see we have individual keyframes there. And we can just grab those. And once it has this little square next to the arrow, I can just grab that one and move it to wherever I want. Or I can actually even delete them as well. If I just press the delete button on the keyboard, once I've highlighted it, we can delete that. So I was a little bit late on the fader. I would probably come in here and maybe, let's see, we've got a lot of, we got a lot of these in here. We probably don't need quite so many. Incredible resolution it was recording with. But we might want to fade down just a little bit sooner. 
we can do that and grab these and tune this all day long we can spend all day long with a mouse <laughs> or you can come in and, and use the fader to to match those i'm going to get rid of some of these there's more than we need here Okay, so you get the idea there. Um, so that's one way we can do it. Now, we can also apply that EQ that we were talking about before. And there are a couple of ways to do that in Adobe Audition. So I'm going to actually, for now, I don't want this. I want to go back to read. What read means as far as automation is concerned is that now when I play this back, it will read uh, what we did with uh, our fader during playback. So let me play it back for you and you can hear. Whoops, I didn't. I made a mistake. I'm going to undo all of that. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and play it back now. If you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode, send a written, audio, or video. And that was without. Now I'm going to turn it to read. And this is what it does. Question to SS. Whoops. Back to the start. Here we go. If you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode. Ah, it turned it off again. My mistake. Read. Back to the start. Okay, now. If you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode, send a written, audio, or video question. To okay, so that's how that works. Now. We can apply an equalizer to the music track as well. So we can just come in here if we wanted to do it this way, come into filter and EQ and choose a parametric equalizer and do a very similar thing. I don't need the high pass filter here, but let's maybe grab this, uh, whoops, this one here. Again, here's the Q or width, if you will. We're gonna drop that down to a smaller number, maybe to somewhere around 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And I can just grab this, bring it up into that range between oh, about 500 and 2 kilohertz and drop it there. So let's go ahead and do some playback. And I'm going to go ahead and do that so we can hear how that sounds. If you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode, send a written audio or video question to SSP at soundspeeds.us. That's soundspeeds with an S at the end, dot US. Want to record this outro? Well, you can't. I'm recording this outro, but... Okay, so similar type thing there. Um, but you might ask, well, what about at the start of the track? Do I really want that EQ at the start when we're first playing the music? Because it's going to sound a little bit muffled. It's going to have that massive EQ cut like this. If you'd like to ask a sound-related question for a future episode, we can actually automate the EQ as well which is pretty exciting. So what we can do <laughs> is let's go in here. We're gonna show uh, the parametric equalizer and we're, we're using band number three and we wanna automate the gain on that, okay? So we're starting right here. And let's go ahead and put that in latch mode. And actually let's put it in write mode. I'm gonna just rewrite it all together. So, and then I wanna show that parametric equalizer. So let's start with it at zero. Okay, and then let's go ahead and start playing. Send a written back to the start. Here we go. If you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode, send a written audio or video question to SSP at soundspeeds.us. That's soundspeeds with an S at the end, dot US. Okay, let's see if that did. It looks like it did it. Okay, let's go ahead and change that back to read and we'll play that back. Read. Okay, this is what it sounds like now. If you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode, send a written audio or video question to SSP at se Well, wait a minute. I'm not sure that worked. You're seeing this line here, which is what? Let's see what that does. 
If you'd like to ask a sound-related question for a future episode... Okay. That actually did work. So that's one way to do it. Another way is we can actually remove some of these here. Um, we can erase or reset things. So that's actually reset it there. There's the volume. Um, there's the parametric equalizer. And we can reset that. So if you needed to start over, that's how you reset. That's the eraser or clear all keyframes right there. So now we had the 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 um the volume was pulled back too much. So what I want to do is I want to re-record that. And actually, I think what I'll do is I'll do the EQ first and then come back and kind of tune the volume in. So let's change to the parametric equalizer. Let's go to right. Let's go to the start of the track, open up our parametric equalizer, start playing. If you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode, send a written audio or video question to ssp at soundspeeds.us. That's soundspeeds with an S at the end, dot US. Want to record this outro? Well, you can't. I'm recording this outro, but if you'd like to record the outro for a future episode, see the details in the description below. Find Soundspeeds on social media and online at www.soundspeeds.us. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more sound-related content. And what I mean is, if you really want to learn something, you should subscribe. I learn new things from Alan all the time. One time, I was listening to this episode and my mind was blown. Okay. So you can see here now, if I expand this, there is our EQ. So I pulled that, just that one parameter down and you can see as we change it back to read, you can see, watch the EQ there. As I get to the end and stop talking, we pulled that back up. So that's how automation for an equalizer works. Now let's do the same thing, except for this time the volume or the fader, if you will. We'll come on over here and here oh wait before I do that <laughs> you do have to change it from read to latch okay back to the mixer and we're gonna pull the volume down as we go here we go if you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode send a written audio or video question to SSP at sound speeds Dot us. That's sound speeds with an S at the end, dot us. Want to record this outro? Well, you can't. I'm recording this outro. But if you'd like to record the outro for a future episode, see the details in the description below. Find Sound Speeds on social media and online at www.soundspeeds.us. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more sound-related content. And what I mean is, if you really want to learn something, you should subscribe. I learn new things from Alan all the time. One time, I was listening to this episode and my mind was blown. Okay. Now we're going to come back over to the multi-track session and there's our automation for the fader or the volume as Adobe Audition refers to it. <laughs> Don't know why they use the term volume, but okay. Um, so here is what... The final piece sounds like and you'll notice when i did the fader i only had to pull it back back between minus 9 and minus 12 as opposed to minus 18 so we didn't have to pull it back so much because we had applied that eq as well so this is what it sounds like now if you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode send a written audio or video question to ssp at sounds and then jumping ahead new things from alan all the time one time I was listening to this episode and my mind was blown. Okay, so there's an example of how you can do that in Adobe Audition with both the equalizer and the fader, and you can automate it as well. So some some techniques there. Now, there are there's another technique as well. Um, this one's a little bit more fiddly, but what you can do as well is with the diet, you can do what's called... Um, side chain compression. So what side chain compression does is it's going to compress the music when I talk. And the way you set that up is you actually just put a compressor in here. So I'm going to come in and say, let's go, they call it dynamics here. 
in in Adobe Auditions. So there's that one. Well, wait a minute. That's not the one I was thinking of. Um, Dynamics Processing is the one I was thinking of. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and come on over to the Settings tab here. And here's the Gain Processor. Um, and actually what I'll do is I'll use a preset here just to make things quick for us. Let's do a soft limit. So it's it just changed some of the settings here. So I want my output gain to remain at zero. And the attack time to be very fast. I probably want my release to be not so fast, probably about 400 milliseconds, roughly. And let's listen to what that does to the music. So right now I haven't side-chained it yet. All I'm doing is is basically compressing here and I actually need to see where these peaks are so I'd know where to set this here um, and maybe maybe not um, let's see let's see what that does for the music so here we go if you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode send a written audio or video question to SSP at soundspeeds.us. That's soundspeeds with an S at the end, dot US. Want to record this out? Okay, see this red bar here? That's how much attenuation it's doing there. So it's 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 pushing things down between 9 and 6 and 12 dB maybe. So let that that is just kind of crushing our music. That's not helping us right now. <laughs> so let me just show you how you would do the side chain. So to do that, you you would come up here into this little setting here. This is the sends. And we're going to send, in essence, what we're going to do is we're going to tell the compressor to look at the dialogue to know when to start compressing, but apply the compression to the music. So all I need to do is come to this one right here um, and go to sidechain, create dynamics processing. It's on the music track slot two. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. Okay, now when I play this back, Watch the uh, attenuation here and let's see what happens. If you'd like to ask a sound related question for a future episode, send a written audio or video question to SSP at soundspeeds.us. That's soundspeeds with an S at the end, dot US. Want to record this outro? Well, you can't. I'm recording this outro. Okay, so that's another thing that you can do now. This one is, you have to dial the settings in just right for it to sound right. That was sounding a little weird to me. Um, personally, I would probably just skip the side chain altogether since it's a, a long string of dialogue. If you have a lot of pauses in your dialogue, this can be helpful. But um, in this case here, I it's another technique. You can dial it in. It can work pretty well. It allows you to not have to attenuate your music nearly as much and still be able to hear the dialogue. Um, but I just wanted you to see that that's an option out there as well. And um, yeah, okay, that's what we had pre pre prepared for the demo. Let's go to the chat here and see what questions we have in the chat so far. And I'm going to take a sip of water. Um, I've been doing plenty of talking here. Does my uh, mute things a little bit. Okay. From Christopher, that is one thing to be said for digital controlled analog gear. Much easier to make sure patches are correct. That's in reference to vacuuming. Oh, that <laughs> regarding vacuuming. Okay, got it. Thanks, Christopher. Yes. <laughs> um, indeed, Daniel says, I presume one would fine tune the frequency one brings down for the music to complement the voice. Men's voices would have a lower frequency pulled down. Yes, I think that's true. Um, and yeah, you can just use your ears when you're pulling, when you're use, working with EQ, you can slide those par parameters back and forth. Um, you can move it to a lower frequency. A lot of the articulation is actually still in the same area for men's voices as women's voices. So, um, you know, this is kind of a, just a rough, we're roughly making space. Um, you're not going to necessarily hear all the richness of men's, you know, if you have a men's voice with a, a man's voice with a lot of low frequency content to it. We're just trying to make a little space. And yeah, you could you could drag the EQ down a little bit, Daniel. Absolutely. 
just experiment with it and see what works best. And you don't have to use just one. Uh, you can use multiple points in a pare uh, parametric equalizer. So if you need to cut a really, the thing is, is the more you cut out of the music, the less you're going to hear of the music. So it's finding that balance is kind of the art to it. This was a while ago. This is a while ago. Volume dip is still active with the EQ and it makes it excessively quiet. Agreed. That's why we went back and reset that. So great point. Agree with you entirely there. Momo, hey everyone. Dumb question. This is just a demonstration, right? In this case, you normally set keys manually, correct? When you say set key like keys as in keyframes, um, I'm not sure I understand the context of that question exactly, but this is just a demo, yes. Um, Shoji, do you ever just drop the overall music level during the dialogue using versus. <clears throat> versus using EQ, or do you always EQ when mixing music behind dialogue? I almost always use EQ. The problem with just using the fader or dropping the volume is that you lose the music at some point, and then it just becomes almost like noise as opposed to music. That's why I think using EQ is important and helpful is that with the EQ, you, you're, you're still keeping some of the bass, especially in popular music, keeping more of the bass and the high frequencies where there's not as much stuff going on with the dialogue. And so the music is, I think psychologically, people are hearing the music to a greater extent if you use EQ versus just dropping the level. Sidechain works with longer release times, but you'll have to adjust the length uh, of the vo of voice possess. Not sure I follow that entirely. So, yeah, you definitely you, you can you can adjust the release time. Um, again, use your ears to figure out what that sounds like. The trick with Audition is that not all of and and this is true of actually all plugins. Not all plugins are sidechain capable. So. Um, you have to use, yeah. You know, in this case, I don't, do we even have a release setting on this? I don't know that we do. I'm going to just take a look at it here. Oh, we do have a release here, and we had it at 300 milliseconds. You could drag that back and forth to tune it in. Um, that's why it, it sounded a little bit, it wasn't too fiddly. The longer you take it, the more it's just going to keep things compressed. The shorter you set the release time, the more quickly it's going to recover the music and bring the music back. So m the way I approach that is just use your ears and drag that back and forth to figure out where the right setting is. There's no, it's not like you can just choose a number, choose a number for dialogue. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's always use your ears and, and move that release time back and forth until you find what actually sounds right. In this case, I probably would just do away with the side chain compression altogether. I think the EQ and the fader is doing enough for us. Um, and, and in light of the, the dialogue itself, I don't think it was necessary. So that's how I would approach it. Pauses. Oh, pauses. My, my. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll change the pauses, if you will, by, by adjusting that release time and, and filling those in in the right way. Oh, I mean, I meant the live keying, setting keyframes during playback. I really find practical use for features like that. That's true. Momo, some people don't like working with like It's totally fine. If we come back on over to Audition here. Um, yeah, you can just, in fact, we can just say we're showing the volume right now. Let's just reset that. You can literally just come in and drop a keyframe, pull another one in, drop another one in, drop another one in. You can totally do that. If you prefer working with your mouse, by all means, work with your mouse. Um, it's it's totally personal preference, completely and totally. Some people prefer to work with faders, and that's that's fine too. I think. I've only tried side com uh, side chain compression before. I uh, yeah, I will have to a go at the EQ way now. Thanks for showing how it's done. You are most welcome, Andy. Uh, I think that and additionally, by the way. Um, you can combine those two concepts as well. You can actually use dynamic EQ, which is essentially, it's a kind of a combination of side, side, side chain compression and EQ at the same time. So instead of compressing the entire music signal, you're just compressing, say, in that middle section between 500 and 2000 or 2500 kilohertz um, or 
2.5 kilohertz. So you're just, in that case, you're not compressing all of the sound just uh, of the music, just the middle portion and making room for the voice. So you can do actually both um, if you have a dynamic equalizer. So that's another option as well. You can see with audio processing, there are millions of options and different ways to approach this. And finding the one that just sounds best to your ears is the number one thing. Also, I want to talk about that. A lot of times people kind of second guess themselves and say, oh, my ears aren't that well trained. Your ears are pretty well, everyone's ears are pretty well trained. Everyone spends um, their days listening. So you actually can hear better than, or if, you're, if you're second guessing yourself on that front, you can actually hear better than you think. Keep practicing. That's another thing. Just keep practicing, practice, 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 and you will get it. Okay. Anything else going on in the chat there? All right, well, let's just go ahead and play. Um, I think we just had one thing to play back here. What party? What party? Uh, go to the super source. There we go. Okay. So Rob did say, here's my video. It's a, uh, I thought it was a question. <laughs> Thanks for this episode. Feel free to share with my fellow soundies. It's also my first use of the DJI mic on location, so to speak. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So let's go ahead and play that back for you. And here we go. Mm. That's good. Anyway, Curtis, um, I first of all want to say thank you very much for dedicating uh, an episode uh, of your live stream, your wonderful live stream, uh, to my question from last week. I'm really looking forward to the answer, um, but not today. Uh, I'm on vacation right now and... Uh, The Acropolis awaits, my friend. Okay, so, <laughs> um, Rob, that that was, um, I just wanted to say, first of all, uh, I think that's great. I hope you enjoy your trip there to Greece. Uh, enjoy the Acropolis there. I am really happy for you, and I'm also a tiny bit envious, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, but I'm curious what people thought about the DJI mic. To me, it sounded pretty decent. I think that's a pretty good use case for the DJI mic. That was a review we did probably, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. We did a review of the mic. And one of the things I did point out was that it does have, uh, it's not the cleanest in terms of self noise, but I think that's a perfect illustration right there of where it didn't doesn't need to be. Uh, perfectly clean. And so for a $329 device that has two transmitters to a single dual channel receiver, it's a pretty good, it's pretty good. So I wouldn't have any qualms using it. Uh, the video was out of sync. That's probably an issue on our end here. So Daniel, that's, don't, don't judge Rob for that. That's, that has to do with our playback system here. Um, I got it just before the live stream, so I didn't get a chance to fix that. Uh, no wonder there was no Rob stream this past weekend. Yeah, if, if you, <laughs> it made me think actually, uh, gosh, 20 plus, 25 years ago, I don't know when it was, uh, there was a Yanni at the Acropolis concert, and this made me think, oh, way longer than that. And maybe it was even longer than that, um, but it made me think Robbie at the Acropolis. Uh, so <laughs> enjoy your trip, Rob. Really excited for you. Um, I thought it sounded pretty good too. I think that, again, that's a good use case. Uh, Daniel says, sounded fine to me. And that's that's a case where especially, and uh, Matt says he's been very happy with them. That's a case where pristine uh, performance in terms of self-noise is not necessarily going to be a factor. If you're using that out vlogging, it doesn't matter. There's so much noise in every space you're going to be vlogging in that it's irrelevant at that point to some extent. So um, good use of the DJI mic there. All right. Let's go to the chat for general uh, questions. Johnny at the Acropolis was definitely more than 25 years ago. <laughs> it's like the early 90s. Early 90s. There you go. Or something like that. 30 years ago then. Okay. All right. Danny's going to take a look through our chat here and see what questions we got. Uh, Danny, I know you offer a course on Isotope RX, but in regards to mastering audio for video, is there a course for Ozone, which I believe contains highly refined ducking? I do not have a course on that. I'm not as familiar with Ozone, to be honest. Um, so for those that are not familiar with Ozone, Ozone is another Isotope product, and it is used primarily for mastering 
music. However, it can be used, of course, for film and video. And it's just one that I have. I do have a license for it. I just haven't dug into it quite as much. Um, what it does really well is that it's really good at, at loudness normalizing. So it makes it the process of, you know, a lot of times when you, when you have to, when you want to hit a target, a loudness target, you say, for example, minus 16 for YouTube, or even minus 14, if you wanted to go that, that loud, uh, for spoken word, I would probably keep it closer to minus 16. But, um, if you want to do that, the compressors that it has built into that are just so nice, so fairly transparent um, and they're super easy to use so that's one thing that we should definitely take a look at but Danny I don't have a specific course on that yet great idea though I like that idea and it does yeah and it also has some ducking capabilities in there as well what is generally recommended for educational content music or not this is purely opinion um, I don't I, I I did that at first on my YouTube channel but um, a lot of people complained about it, and I didn't necessarily like it a lot. There's been some psychoacoustic research suggesting that there are some kind of soothing or calming benefits for it, uh, with it, with music playing behind. Um, I would use this more in a, um, like a narrative context, narrative video versus an educational video. I don't like leaving music playing the entire time. That's my personal preference. It doesn't mean that it's wrong to do it. I know Rob's live stream, I think they, at least they used to. Um, play music behind, and I think that's perfectly legitimate. Um, so I think it's really a, a personal thing. I think for educational content, though, I generally personally prefer not to play music behind it. At the intro and outro, yes, but not not while I'm talking through the whole thing. Darren says, DJI mic sounded good, but the GMT Swatch stole the show. Good, <laughs> good eye there, Darren. Yep. The GMT watch stole the show, indeed. I missed that. Yeah, he's he's. It's pretty. It's actually pretty prominent. I think is on his left wrist oh. there. Teacher, teacher. Speaking of not trusting one's ears, on my Talking Heads uh, films, people with bassy voices appear to sound louder than others, even though the peaks are consistent. Am I crazy? You are not. No, that's not at all unusual. So, that's a great illustration of where peak amplitude does not equal loudness, okay? Really, really important to, to kind of drill that into your mind. If you're looking at things visually, even if the peaks are only at minus six on one track and they're at minus zero or minus one on another, that doesn't mean the one with a minus uh, one peak max is louder. It does not mean that at all. And that's why we use loudness units full scale. So you are absolutely not crazy. Um, and that's, that's not at all unusual. Okay, there's two to this. Okay, two-part question here. Yanni at the Acropolis was 1995. Actually, 1993, according to YouTube. There you go. Almost 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> and now, in 2022, we have Robbie at the Acropolis. You mean you don't carry your mix pre with noise assist on holiday? I know. Um, you could if you had a mix pre-3 and you're really dedicated, I suppose. But... Um... <laughs> Yeah, not necessarily necessary for, certainly for vlogging, at least. Uh, Procopy, I've been experimenting with Waves Clarity, tried to insert it into RX9 as a plugin. Makes me think that Isotope won't take 64-bit plugins, but I couldn't find any details on Isotope website. Any ideas? Um, I don't... Mm... I don't know. I have you. Can I pull for Clarity VX in here? I don't know. Don't uh, let me take a look. And I'm going to be in RX10. I don't know if I have Clarity VX. No, don't switch. Let me just take a look here really quickly. I'm going to go to the plugins. I am going to go to select plugin. I don't appear to have. The waves plugins on here so I don't have that right at my fingertips apologize for that pro copy um, I don't know are you on Windows are you on a Mac and when you say 64-bit plugins are you talking about VST 3s 
Um, so just a couple follow-ups there. If you have that info, we'd love to dig into that a little bit more. Uh, Matt has a strong opinion. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, doesn't like music behind intro, outro, break only. Yeah, that's kind of my approach. Yeah, but again, it's personal. It's all personal. Can be, it can work either way. All right, people, if you have other questions, go ahead and drop them in. We've got another 10 minutes here. Would love to see what else you have to say. Okay. This, um, was, this was at the beginning, but you kind of covered some of it. Okay, this is at the beginning. Let's talk about sidechain compression, mid-side EQ. Weird. Um, hopefully we didn't lose anybody there. But the choice of music that you're going to put behind dialogue, I think, is also very important. That's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up, PJ. Um yeah, choosing the right music. So use your ears again. Find something that's going to sit behind the dialogue in the way you want it and also carry the emotional weight or uh, message that you're looking to carry as well. So I think that's important as well. It's a good point there. Some of those others I'm not as familiar with. Uh, you're, uh, okay, Procopy, you're on VST on Windows. So VST3, I don't know. I didn't, I've never tried to use uh, Clarity in Isotope RX because I had Dialog Isolate there, so I didn't mean to pull it in there. I didn't have any problems with Clarity VX in Adobe Audition, or I think I used it in Logic as well. No problems there, but I haven't tried it in um, Isotope RX, so I can try that next time. I, I have to go back and reinstall. I won't do that here on the live stream, but we'll take a look at that when I get an opportunity. If anyone else knows, um, by all, it's weird. Anyway, hope that's not affecting the stream. Doesn't look like it is. Um, good stuff. Yulian is a is definitely a, a staple for me. We use it on all of our all of our live streams uh, for work. Uh, I monitor the audio using Yulian and um, Rogue Amoeba Audio Hijack, and so I actually bring up the live stream. Uh, we do a test live stream beforehand. And we actually stream it to YouTube and I monitor it from the YouTube stream itself, not from anywhere earlier in the signal chain, using Audio Hijack and Yulian. And we're able to get a really good read on where things are sitting. So been a really useful tool. Uh, voice meter, I haven't I haven't played with that one as much. Or actually ever. Uh, um, curious to know how that works. Getting some buffering pauses in the stream. Okay. Yeah, Weird glitches. glitches in the stream. YouTube is having server issues. Uh, make sure it's not my on my side here. Everything's looking okay on my encoder. So yeah, could be a YouTube thing. Okay. Any other chat? Okay. Danny's gonna pull those up for us here. Two part. Do you have a recommendation for lav mics, mostly for short films, YouTube videos, but maybe some client work if it's good enough? I'm a cameraman mainly, so it shouldn't be too big of an investment. I usually rent audio gear, so I am not that deep in the topic. I uh, I assume Momo, you're running the audio directly to camera. Is that the case? I mean, there. It depends on what you want. Um, if you're just if you're mostly doing talking head and working indoors, the Sennheiser AVX is really easy to use and it sounds good. Um, once you get outside, I think you, you can run into some distance issues with that system, but it's it's um, it sounds good and it's reliable indoors and easy to use. So that would be my, my recommendation on that front. If you want something, if you're going to have someone actually operating a sound mixer and you're, um, you know, somebody could be dedicated to that while you're working on camera, um, then I think the, the question is a very, or the answer is a very different answer versus if you're a camera operator just trying to manage the hundred things that you're trying to manage, lighting, camera, sound, interviews, uh, your craft services, your everything, everything. Um, in those cases, I think for audio, it's best to keep things as simple as possible and as straightforward as possible. So that's my general approach. If you are a dedicated sound person, then that's where I would move into a UHF system of some sort. And depending on what kind of budget you're looking at and how many channels of audio you need, 
Um, we just did a review to that went up this morning about the audio, or sorry, I, I still trip on this. It's the Sound Devices A20 wireless system, um, which is an extension of their original A10, which is the main system I use. So they have dual channel slot receivers. Um, so I've got four channels of that. Plus I've got four A10 transmitters, an A20 transmitter. Um, so yeah, it just it, you have to have somebody that's, you either have to get that set up all ahead of time. Um, there's a little bit more work in terms of you have more flexibility because you can choose different frequencies and definitely ensure that you get a signal through, but it does take some time to set that up. And it depends on if you're a solo operator doing everything, that's where those kind of systems are harder to operate with potentially, unless you really dive in and learn them well and get them, you know, have enough time to set them up ahead of time. So those are some thoughts there. Hopefully that makes sense. Have you reviewed the Senkin CSM-1 or CSM-50? Um, no, not the CSM-1, the CSM-50. I did review one of their stereo shotgun mics. They have some really unusual mics, the Senkins. Um, let's see what that one is. CSM-50. One second. Senkin CSM-50. That's the short stereo shotgun mic. I have not reviewed that. They have a longer short uh, shotgun mic, stereo mic that I reviewed a long time ago, probably 2016. <laughs> it was fun, but it was one of those things. It was $1,800, I think, and it just wasn't something that I was going to use a whole lot. I I just borrowed it for the review, but um, no, I haven't I haven't reviewed those. I can say this: the Sankin. It's, it's going to be personal preference. It's going to be whether it fits the voice that you're using it on. I found the Sankin mics, to me, work really well on some voices. And, and this is true of most mics, actually. They, they sound... I don't know. I have never been the biggest fan of the Sankin sound. It doesn't mean that they're bad mics. I want to be very clear about that. But they're just not my favorite sounding mics on most voices. On some voices, they sound good. Um, they tend to be, from my point of view, a little bright and a little bit mid-heavy uh, personally, but that's just my own personal preference or my own my own ears and my and, and what I've observed. So they're not bad mics, I'm sure. Sankin makes great mics. They've, lots of production sound mixers have used them, but I haven't reviewed those particular ones. Darren, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, always appreciate the time and effort the Judd team puts into educating the group. Thank you so much. That includes Danny. That includes Emma, who is now our producer for the main channel. Um, so she's you'll, you'll notice she's appearing in those a little bit more, and she's doing a lot of the behind-the-scenes the work on those as well. So thanks to Emma as well. Can you recommend some music sites for use in productions? Oh, my goodness. Okay, let me say this. I have... Um, I'm glad you asked. Um, this is tricky. So the... I'm an affiliate, in full disclosure, I'm an affiliate for Musicbed. The, the tracks that we play at the start of this and the end of this are Musicbed tracks. And at, same with the, the main YouTube channel. What I really like about Musicbed is that the artists that make their music available via Musicbed get to retain copyright on that music. So they can still use their own music for their for other things. They can put it on Spotify, for example. They can sell it via other other places. They don't have they're not exclusively able to sell or play the music just from Musicbed. So um to me that seems the fairest thing for the artist. So that's why I like Musicbed. The challenge with Musicbed is that um and actually the process, there's an update from when I talked to you earlier this morning. So the way that it works with Musicbed is that when my videos go live on YouTube, and I, I guarantee you, if, if I pulled up my email, I bet right now it would say that your live stream, uh, there's a copyright claim on your live stream because the music belongs to somebody else. And as soon as my live stream is done, within a couple of minutes, it'll remove that claim and say, oh yeah, you're actually licensed, you're good to go. So they have to do it that way because of the way they set things up. So because they allow the, the 
musician or yeah, the musicians to retain copyright. So it makes things a little bit more challenging that way. But it, I've, it, you know, the worst that's ever happened is some somehow the copyright claim didn't clean clear, clear on one of my videos, and so I had to send an email to Musicbed. They cleared it up as soon as they got it. They read the email, and then it was good to go. Now there are lots of other music sites out there, music stock music services out there. There's um, Artlist comes to mind. Premium Beat is another one that I've used before in the past, distant past. Um, Premium Beat does an interesting thing where they sell not only the songs themselves, but music packs where you can actually get a loopable portion of the song, which can be useful for video. So that's another thing to consider. But right now I'm a Musicbed affiliate. Um, and I do like the selection. The selection of music on Musicbed to me is one of the best. Um, I'm always able to find something there that, that kind of fits the vibe or the emotional feel that I'm aiming for with the music. So that's why I'm a music bed affiliate. Uh, Christopher says a lot of music behind audio is done with short music loops and those get really repetitious fast. Yeah, I agree. That can be tedious. And that's not what you want. When you're playing music, you're not looking for adding tedium to uh, things. I did a short iPhone app tutorial and without the music, you at times might think the video was stuck. The music provided a forward movement during the app pauses, so it worked for me, I felt. And that's fair. Totally fair. I think it can work. Just, I think it, it also just depends on the context. It's all context dependent. I mostly rent a Zoom H4n. Personally, I have an H1n, and yes, I mainly work alone, so I have to do both. In that case, I DJI mic, uh, Rode Wireless Go 2, um, Sennheiser AVX, like we talked about, if you want something with an XLR output. I don't know what kind of cameras you're running with, but um, yeah, those are the, the what I do when I'm operating solo is I actually use my sound devices Mix Pre, usually the Mix Pre 3, um, or I just bring my whole my my regular audio bag which has the sound devices 888 which is overkill in a lot of situations but um then i run the the but i have the wireless all set up in that bag so for me that's easy um but if you're going to run audio directly to camera the, if you're going to go into something like an h4n the problem the problem potentially with the zoom h series is that i don't know how well shielded they are so if you get a lot of radio frequency activity right next to them, it can potentially be problematic, but you're putting the receivers there, so probably not an issue. <sighs> yeah, but I I mean, if I'm going to look, look at consumer wireless, my first choice would probably be the Rode Wireless Go. Second choice would probably be DJI mic. If you want to moving up to something with an XLR output, then I would probably look at the Sennheiser AVX or the Sennheiser G4. Or the Sony. Sony has a digital wireless system. And their naming conventions are so crazy. I don't remember. They're so wild that I don't remember the model numbers. But the I think it's the UWP-D system. Um, that's one worth looking at it as well. If you go to the Sennheiser G4 or the Sony, that's when you're getting into to the situation where you're choosing frequencies. That's that's a mixed blessing. It's wonderful because you now can choose from a whole variety of frequencies. So if you show up in a location and the wireless isn't working because there's too much Wi-Fi um, with a consumer wireless system, you're out of luck. Um, you don't have a great solution unless you're using those new ones that record on the transmitters. And so you're just basically hoping for the best, hoping there's not a bunch of clothing rustle um, because you can't monitor it if you turn it on and use it as a recorder. But... Um, with the UHF systems, then you can, um, you know, if there is a TV station nearby, for example, or some other radio frequency in the in the default or in the, the, the frequency that you're tuned to, you can tune to a different frequency and avoid that altogether. So, <clears throat> and if you're going to use a lot of channels of wireless, more than two, that's when a UHF system makes more sense to me. So those are some thoughts there. Okay, we're wrapping, up. we're wrapping up. Teacher, teachers, I am glad to hear I'm not crazy. It is, is it common to EQ bassy voices to get them a little less bassy? I asked because once I started touching EQ, I make things worse. Well, you can just roll off some of the lows. Yeah, I mean, especially if it's, if it's starting to sound something like, you know, really 
really heavy bassy like that, then yeah, that can be fatiguing to listen to and it can be hard to understand if they have a really dark voice without a lot of articulation, then definitely roll off. You just apply a high pass or a low cut filter and just just use your ears, pull that, pull the frequency up until it starts to sound more normal. Uh, or if it starts to sound, you know, pull it up and, until it starts to sound thin, like a radio, an AM radio voice, and then pull it back some. Bring a little bit of the bass back and so that you can understand it well, and that's a good spot to be. All right. With that, oh, Mark has one more. <laughs> Danny says, this is the last one. Um, thank you. Thanks for the recommendation. I like the copyright process you mentioned with Musicbed. That's a big issue in my world of still photography. Absolutely. Um, it's important, I think, for artists to be able to... Wait to have a oh sorry 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 Danny is gonna Danny's ready for I lunch sugar finger. <laughs> I have sugar finger she, uh, are you hungry no okay just, just kidding just I kidding was trying to get the comment off and... all right everybody well thank you so much for coming to the live stream today I hope everything is going well for you get out there and make some great sound and we'll talk to you again next week bye bye